Hi ladies, today is Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. Mm -hmm. I am 13 weeks postpartum, exactly three months. Well, yesterday was three months on October 8th. Miss Michaela was born July 8th. So I can't believe it's been three months. I mean, wow. I For those of you that went through this entire um, journey with me, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like everything from IVF to the pregnancy to now. I mean, I started my IVF journey around this time last year. So, and here I am and I have a three month old baby. So it has just been incredibly fast for me. Um, and I mean, it's still surreal. I'm going to be honest. Every day I wake up and I'm like, oh wait, I have a baby. Like, forever. <laughs> it's just it's just surreal and I cannot believe how quickly she's growing and how fast time is moving. It's bittersweet for me because I mean like I just it's you know, it's sweet that she's getting so big and it's exciting that she's growing and she's developing. I mean, the development from like birth to now is just crazy because she used to just be a lump, right? And so now she has her own personality. Well, she displayed personality earlier on, but just like, you know, she's super active. She's super alert. She tries to stand. She tries to crawl. Um, you know, she, she'll, um, she, you know, holds rattles and, and, um, still doesn't love tummy time. She hates tummy time, but it's well, at least on her tummy time mat. She'll do it better if it's like on my chest or something, but she doesn't like the tummy time mat, but still like, you know, all, all these different things. She's playing with toys a little bit now. So, and she's, she is super social. She makes eye contact. Um, she'll follow you around the room. She'll try to find you your voice so she, if you're if you're talking behind her you know she turns her head around she's she laughs and smiles you know she does all these smiles you smile at her she's smiling back such a happy little girl um i mean when she's not crying and you know screaming and but yeah you know in between that she's a happy little girl and uh, i mean she's absolutely amazing so yesterday on her three-month birthday we had um, early intervention come. And I think I may have mentioned this to you briefly um, around her two-month appointment. Her doctor was saying because she wasn't grabbing for rattles that she thought she may be slightly behind with her development. And so she wanted me to have early intervention. And early intervention is, from my understanding, is um, a, a not-for-profit organization that comes in really from age from birth to three and really evaluates babies to make sure they're developing appropriately and helps set up some sort of um, therapy, ongoing therapy, if the babies are not. Now, it's not necessarily free. They charge on a sliding scale based on your income if ongoing therapy is needed, but the initial evaluation is free. So yesterday we had the initial evaluation. And I'm going to be serious. I was pissed off that at two months because Michaela had her two-month appointment at like she just turned two months. So I was annoyed that at two months, her pediatrician was like, oh, she's not grabbing for the rattle. So she's not developed, you know, like she's a little behind. I contend the baby is perfect. I mean, even if she was slightly behind, she'd still be perfect. But I was like, there's nothing wrong with this baby. She's super alert. You see her trying to push up and stand and pull up on your hands to try to, you know, I mean, she just does a lot of things, but there's a lot of areas you know, there's fine motor skills, gross motor skills, cognitive skills, social skills. So it is possible to be, you know, normal and adva or advanced in some of those areas and still behind in other areas. But it just annoyed me that the doctor was like, I'm like, she's two months old. Don't judge her yet. Give her a chance to live. Lord, like, I mean, she wasn't born with any issues that we were aware of. So it's like, give her a chance to live. Don't judge her and stigmatize her at two months. So that was what I was concerned about. But being a, you know, um, I guess a good mother, I decided to go ahead and, and reach out to early intervention, which is what the doctor wanted me to do. And I couldn't get an appointment with them until Octo October 8th, which was almost a month later. 
And so they came to my home and they did this evaluation with Michaela, which was basically playing with her. And I was kind of shocked that she even let the woman hold her um, to play with her because Michaela is not about other people. She's better with her dad now, but really it's just the two of us. I need her to expand her circle, but she's really not about other people holding her. Um, and that's probably maybe she picks that like for me because I really don't like a lot of people holding her either. Um, but when I am okay with someone holding her, she's still not okay with it. But anyway, um, so yeah, the lady came in and she played with her. Um, they sent two, they sent a physical therapist and a speech therapist. And I was thinking, why are you sending a speech therapist? But they just want to make sure she's cooing appropriately. So for her age, she should be doing the vows, you know, uh, 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 what she does, like she'll talk. Like there are times when you would think she's telling you a story because she is just going on and on and going off and you're like, uh-huh, and talking back to her. And she's, as if she's telling you a story. So, you know, there's that, um, excuse me. And the more advanced sounds for a baby are the consonant sounds. So the vowels come first and then consonants. So um, the other day I thought I heard her like say mom. Now, before I say that, I don't, I'm sure she was not calling me. She just said, made a sound that sounded like that. She'd be an absolute genius if she was calling me, right? <laughs> but she made a sound that sound like mom. Um, so I was sharing that with the speech therapist. So the consonants like mama and dada and baba, I guess, which is bottle, I guess, I guess, I don't know. Um, those come in those are the first consonant sounds apparently to come in so the fact that she's even starting to to make those sounds now is really good um and um so speech wise flying colors um so we didn't really have any issues there a physical therapist played with her and did the tracking to make sure she's like following with um her finger not well following a finger but following toys so she had like this brightly colored rat on it I wanted to make sure Michaela would follow it around the room, that she holds her head up, that she's, you know, doing things that she, um, they do a eyesight and a hearing, um, evaluation as well to make sure that that's not impairing the baby's development. But they touch, they test on a bunch of different areas. Like I said, gross, motor skills, fine motor skills, cognitive skills, social skills, verbal, like it's a bunch of areas. Michaela was normal in all of them. Like she was, I like to say she's a, you know, she's not average. She's above average. But either way, she was great. Like she is a normal, healthy baby. There was no sign of a delay found. So it kind of annoys me with the doctor. I mean, it's like just because the calendar turned and she was technically two months, to try to say that the baby has to be doing it that way at that moment really bothered me because it's like babies operate within a range, you know? And so although Michaela wasn't necessarily doing those things at her two-month appointment, she was doing them by the time early intervention came while she was still two months. I mean, she just turned three months yesterday. So she's been doing them for weeks. She just hadn't started by the time that, you know, that appointment happened. So it was just annoying that the doctor kind of went that route with it. I mean, she was young, you know? So and she's still really young. We're talking about a three-month-old baby, but Last thing you, as a parent you want to hear is that your baby's not developing properly because it makes you scared or it made me scared. And, and then it made me feel like, should I be doing things? Because sometimes I'm, I mean, I try to play with her and I try to play with her correctly. And, you know, I read to her every day and we, you know, I'm trying to do all the right things, but you don't know what all the right things are all the time. So I'm just doing my best. And sometimes I'm tired. So, you know, I'm just like trying to make it through. So, I felt really guilty about it because I was like, maybe I'm not doing enough of this or enough of that. You know, I know she hates tummy time. So I tend to like let her skimp on it a little bit, although it is really important. But as soon as she starts to scream, I try to pick her up, although I'm going to try to make her stay a little more, but not necessarily on her tummy. We started rolling, which she can roll, which is a little scary because she started rolling while she was sleeping in her bed and she's not really great at rolling she can roll but she can't unroll or roll back and babies at her age still need to sleep on their back and she's not adept at rolling where she's rolling back and forth yet so i did contact her pediatrician about that who said maybe i can um strap her down <laughs> honestly because her bassinet we hadn't really 
still been using her bassinet. Her bassinet is okay to use up to 15 pounds. Michaela's 12 pounds, two ounces um, as of Monday. So we had a gastroenterology appointment for whatever reason, but that's a different topic. And she's, um, she's 12 pounds, two ounces. And so, um, so she's not, she's still under the, the 15 pounds, even though she is three months. So they, um, they wanted, um, so, so for the bassinet, the pediatrician wanted me to strap her in because her bassinet, the way it's designed. And I showed it to you guys like earlier on way before she was born, it has a seat belt in it because it pro you can prop it up the bed portion and make it like a seat. So it has a seat belt pop, um, aspect to it. I wasn't using it that way, so I never really used the seat belt. But now I'm starting. I did use the seat belt a couple of times just to um, put her in at night when she was rolling because it was scary that she was constantly rolling on her side. And I was afraid that she would end up rolling on her stomach and not being able to breathe and she couldn't roll back. But, um, she ended up, um, being okay because I was strapping her in, but I didn't really like strapping her in either. Cause like, it's like, it doesn't seem too super comfortable to strap her into the, the bassinet, but, um, she's kind of stopped rolling that way. I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, it gives me more, um, you know, peace of mind when at night because I can sleep. Because before I was like sitting up watching her every time she turned, I had to turn her back. So at least now I have a little more peace of mind. But um, she hasn't been rolling as much, so that's good. Or at least until she can master rolling and rolling back. Um, that's when you don't have to worry about it. When a baby is able to roll off their stomach or roll back, then it's okay. But she can't do both. So she's advanced in that rolling thing, but then not rolling. And it's kind of my fault because we were, I was teaching her how to roll and she got it halfway down. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there's that. But bottom line, early intervention says she was perfect. She did not qualify for further treatment. For, to qualify for treatment, you have to be severely deficient. And they have a way that they define that um, based on their chart and their scales. She did not qualify, which is good. It's good to not qualify because she's fine. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we're happy about that. And she passed with flying colors. So she's a normal little girl. Um, like I said, I think above average, but whatever. We'll take average. Um, um, so we went on Monday to a gastroenterologist appointment. Now, I told you a few weeks back we went to a gastroenterologist appointment because she was having constipation where she wouldn't go poop for like nine days in a row. But since then, that has resolved, not from anything the gastroenterologist did because she didn't really do anything. She just examined her, told me I could give her prune juice if I felt it was necessary, but I chose not to do prune juice um, because I didn't feel it was necessary. And she started going more often. So she may not poop every day, but she usually poops um, maybe every two or so days, which is great because we haven't had a long stint um, of nine or five or any days anymore. Um, so I'm happy about that. But the gastroenterologist just wanted me to follow up. So I come for a follow up and I, you know, I happen to mention that Michaela's gassy and breastfed babies tend to be gassy. And then when this woman's talking about, oh, um, you should try this alimentum by Similac. It's a formula that is for babies with food allergies or colic. So we don't think Michaela has a food allergy. We think it's, she was saying it was more of a colic thing for gassiness. She tried to get me to give up dairy. I tried to give up dairy until I realized dairy wasn't everything. So even when I tried to give up dairy, I wasn't giving up dairy because I didn't realize how much things dairy, how many things include dairy. So that didn't work out well. So I'm going to try again and maybe that'll cut down on some of the gassiness, but it, but ultimately they usually grow out of it. Um, hopefully she's not lactose intolerant and hopefully she'll grow out of the gassiness, um, which usually happens. So she's starting to wake up from that, her nap. Um, but, um, she wanted me to try Alimentum by Similac for two days, 48 hours. And quite frankly, I haven't done it because I've worked so hard to get her own breast milk and exclusively breast milk, whether that's through breastfeeding or through supplementing with a um, expressed breast milk that I really don't want to supplement with Alimentum or any formula. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with formula. It's nothing wrong with formula. It's just that I have worked like a dog to get to a point where <laughs> she's looking at me where, um, hey baby, mommy be done in one minute. Get her to a point 
where she's not on any formula. So quite frankly, I really don't want to go back to formula if I don't have to. I mean, there are days where this girl drinks crazy and I'm like, I cannot keep up breast milk wise. But thank God I went on times when I had like a lot of milk, I was freezing and I've had a, I have a, a refrigerator stash and a freezer stash. So I'm, I've thankfully have been okay, but, um, but it's just like, you know, I don't want to try the alimentum if I don't have to. So the doctor's like, oh, try that and come back in two weeks. So it's always something. I honestly think I'm going to get ready to say whatever to this gastroenterologist because it's just another doctor trying to like make me nervous that there's something wrong with this child. And I'm thinking, all right, she's a little farty. All right. Well, okay. Sorry about that, but she's fine. So, I mean, it'll pass. It's not that bad. She's not so, so bad. She's that uncomfortable. Well, sometimes she's uncomfortable. We do Milocon and we do gripe water um, when we need to. Gripe water, we don't do every day. But when we need to, we do gripe water. We do Milocon. I don't know if I want to go to formula because of that. But because, like I said, I've just worked hard to try to do breast milk only. Nothing wrong with formula, not judging formula. I haven't even tried the Alimentum yet. But it's just, I've been working like a dog to, to, my breasts are so sore from the pumping and the pumping and the breastfeeding and the pumping and, and I'm buying supplements and this and that. So it's like, give a formula? I don't know. Not if I don't have to. Maybe I just got to give up ice cream and yogurt and everything. If you read the labels, everything almost has dairy in it. Anyway, ladies, she's getting fussy. So, um, just wanted to give you that update on what's going on with Miss Michaela's development. And I can't believe it's been three months, Lord. But um, I will talk to you soon. All right.